We diagnose prolonged grief disorder when someone has a, a reaction to the loss of a loved one that's pretty much persistent for at least a year. We've In DSM, it's at least a year. In the ICD-11, it's only six months. What they're experiencing is that the, the intensity of the yearning and longing and, and preoccupying thoughts and memories of the person who died is so intense that it has hijacked their whole life, really. It hijacks their thoughts, it hijacks their behavior. It makes it very, very difficult to engage with other people. They feel disconnected and kind of cut off from other people who love them and are trying to be there for them. And a feeling of not really being able to do things that remind you of the person who died. So that means First of all, your life is very restricted, but also you're really not able to, to um, connect with your memories in a positive way because they're too painful. It feels too painful. I, I think of it as a feeling of being disconnected from oneself and from other people in the world that makes it hard to kind of even, it's like your identity. You don't have your own identity. It's part of like a part of yourself died as well. So there are similar kinds of, of um, thoughts and feelings, but in depression, they're much more broad and they're, they're, they tend to be focused on, on feeling badly about oneself and when, when in the future and the world at large. Whereas again, in, in um, prolonged grief disorder, that's gonna be very focused on what, you know, how, how did I not help that person more? How did I not prevent the death? Or how did I not make the death easier or something like that? My work has centered on treatment of prolonged grief disorder. I've been doing this for about 25 years now. And we, um, I led a group that developed and tested a 16 session psychotherapy intervention um, that, that was proven to be efficacious when compared with really good treatment for depression, including our most recent study looked at the efficacy, the possible efficacy of antidepressant medication. And we were not able to document any helpfulness really of antidepressant medication for the symptoms of grief. Now, often people do experience grief and depression together, that, that does happen. And the depression does still respond to the, to the um, antidepressant, but but um, the grief symptoms really don't. We know that we can do a psychotherapy that's efficacious. It's not the only one. Um, other investigators have shown that the CBT approach pretty clearly works. And I believe also that, that there are a whole range of other possible ways of working with people who have prolonged grief disorder that good clinicians will work out and hopefully they, they will understand that that's the way that you help people. You don't need to help them. You don't, they don't need medication. And there is no medication today that, that has been shown to be efficacious for the treatment of prolonged grief disorder. So hopefully clinicians will understand that. So I, I think it's, it's very understandable that people are reluctant to sort of diagnose grief. I mean, I feel the same way. In fact, one of the things that we make a big point of in, in the therapy is that grief is, grief is not the focus of the treatment. We, we think that grief is a form love takes. It is the form love takes when someone we love dies and we need to honor and, and um, accept it into our lives, even though it is painful at times. It's, you know, it, it gets less painful over time. It usually becomes more bittersweet, but we don't stop missing a person we love. And so I think people who are worried that somehow um, clinicians, doctors, somebody is going to misinterpret the idea of there being a prolonged grief disorder to mean that people are supposed to get over their grief. Um, that is not the idea at all. Rather, the reason why we need this diagnosis is because it turns out that there are a small group of people, it's, not a, it's actually a large group of people, but a small percentage of people who are, um, who are bereaved, who really can't move forward in their lives. Their lives really come to a standstill. And you know, in some of the 
and, and so we, we do have to be very careful to be respectful of grief, but we also need to be respectful of the fact that sometimes people really do need help to, to kind of start to come to terms with that loss in a, in a way that, that their loved ones would want them to and everyone around them need them to and they need for themselves. So what we're gonna be focusing on is helping people accept the reality that they're the new reality of the absence of this person and restore their capacity to thrive in their own lives in that context. That's really what the therapy is about.